I've done a million recordings for this video and I'm tired of messing up. So you know what? We're just gonna freestyle it. I don't even care anymore. Welcome everyone, Buku Shikes here. And after a very long hiatus, I am back to attempt to revive this channel once again. Before I continue, I do want to note two things. One, I'm actually recording off of my iPhone SE2, so I apologize for the mic quality, but I will be investing in a new mic so that I can provide better quality content for videos like these. And two, if you do like what you hear and see, to subscribe to the channel and like this video. All comments and criticisms will be looked at and appreciated, of course. So with that, let's get underway. So, out of the three new characters for Wow, I didn't even talk about what game I was talking about. Um, after finishing Persona 5 Royal for the PS4, I collected my thoughts after a few weeks and I just wanted to go over the major changes that were added to this game. I'm not going to go over the base Persona 5 game, as I have a lot to say about that game, both good and bad. So first off, I want to start off with three major characters that took the spotlight for this game, which are Dr. Maruki, Kasumi Yoshizawa, and Goro Kenji. Oh, by the way, spoilers for the entire game will be in this video, so watch out. I warned you. So, out of the three, I wanted to, out of the three new characters, Dr. Maruki, well, Akechi isn't new, but Dr. Maruki is undoubtedly the best out of the three. He is the most well developed, his arc feels the most complete, and is a well rounded, fleshed out character. He is, he is a nice antithesis to the game's theme of taking hold of your future and rebelling against society, as Dr. Maruki believes that. He should be the one to provide happy, happiness to everyone, even if it means establishing a one world order and restricting everyone's freedom at the cost of everyone feeling happy and achieving their dreams and desires. He's a nice addition to the game, and especially with this whole palace and navigating it and the boss fight, all of it was very nicely well done and well executed. And out of the villains and, and antagonists of the game, he's actually the best out of all of them. He makes all the other ones look really bad in comparison, except for Kamishida, which is of course the best villain of the base Persona 5 game. Next, I want to talk about Kasumi Yoshizawa. She's a very... eh character. I didn't really care about her. Her addition felt very forced and Atlas really wanted us to care about her and to, want, and to use her, but she's not even available to use the party member until the very last dungeon of the game. By that time, your team's already well fleshed out and probably already beefed up, so there's not really much point in using her. Plus, her, we only start to care about her character until the third semester, after 10 months of the game. It just feels very off, and her addition feels very forced, and especially with the extra seeds added, just make the game feel a lot longer than it needed to be, so her inclusion was very... Yeah, big. You could have removed it from the story, and I mean, obviously all of her stuff about her you know, actually being Sumeri and her sister dying, but it just felt very forced. And lastly, Akechi, they wanted to round out his characters, they made him a, a manual social link instead of an automatic one. And it was nice, you know, to try and get to know him more as a character and to understand him and his thoughts and his ideals, but it's kind of weird because even though they want us to feel sorry for him and to redeem him, he never actually apologizes for murdering Wakaba and Akumura, so kind of weird how Atlas really really wants to feel sorry for him. And I guess they tried to pull in Adachi but it doesn't really work as well because Adachi was funny and well liked and he was a goofball whereas base Akechi before the Black Mask reveal was very serious and kind of an oddball so not really the best way to pull off an Adachi but overall wasn't the worst so overall yeah Akechi was pretty good. Next, I want to go over the more minor changes of the game, mostly quality of life changes. First off, the gun ammunition system was a godsend. I'm very glad that they changed that because running out of ammo in a dungeon and only using bullets to down enemies was very, very irritating. So I'm glad they changed that. Very welcome addition to the game and to try and make new combos with infinite tech damage, with trying to shock enemies or freeze enemies. Next, one feature that I felt that was should have been in the base game, for some reason wasn't, was the fact that you're, you were previously not allowed to do anything after navigating a palace. Like, you weren't even allowed to level up any stats, you were forced to go to bed. Persona 3, you always had at least one segment of the day to do something, even if you went to TARDIS in the dark hour. And Persona 4, you were allowed to at least make money in your room by making origami or sending letters, or even just leveling up stats. So I really don't understand why Atlas decided to just not allow you to do that in the base game. 
and they shouldn't be praised for putting that option in the Royale. That should have been a feature in the base game, so that was kind of weird how they did that, but thankfully I'm glad they did put that feature because it was kind of dumb that wasn't in the game. The Jazz Club was great addition to beef up your characters and to try and make your choices more meaningful in the game. The billards and the technical system, the technical weird was kind of eh. I liked it, I enjoyed it, it makes for a lot of new combos and damage, but overall, the game's difficulty is not balanced around this, so the game actually becomes easier when you think about it, now that you have all these new options to take down enemies, as if the game wasn't already easy enough for an um, Atlas game. The Baton Pass system, very nice, I liked it, very nice way to beat the Baton Pass, once again, difficulty wasn't balanced around that, so the game just felt even more easier. Savage Shadows, uh, they're just big fat HP tanks, and they actually nerfed some of them, like, for example, Anubis and Futaba's Palace, he has breaks between his attacks, in fact, most Savage Shadows have breaks in between their attacks, so it's kind of weird how they decided to just nerf Savage Shadows randomly. I don't want this video to go on too long, I just want to touch on the what I thought about the game. Overall, it was a, the game was very nice, it felt like the base game in a sense. They didn't really, like, the story pacing is still awful, the game, they didn't really do too much to change the game, which I guess is expected of Persona rework games. If you enjoyed Persona 5, you're gonna enjoy Royale. If you didn't like Persona 5, you're not gonna like Persona 5 Royale. Personally, I thought it was a good game, not amazing, definitely not terrible, it was a good game. And also, I have a strange bias towards it because I bought it for 25% off off the PSN store, because believe me, I'm not paying full price for a game I've already played before. So overall, if you like Persona 5, you'll like Royale. And I like Royale, so that's my opinion of the game. Thank you everyone for listening and tuning in, and see you next time. Man, I'm tired of these takes.